me ask you a question. What are rare earth metals? Rare earth metals. You know, these are about 17 metals. Uh, some of them have got, you know, really tongue twisting pronunciation. I, I'll read them out for you. Praseodymium, yttrium. So they've got real tongue twisters they are. But you know, they're all around us. Uh, we don't see them, but they're all around us. Uh, uh, our uh, television sets, our mobile phones, our electric vehicles, anything uh, which is today's modern sophisticated electronics is driven very critically by these rare earth, by these 17 rare earth uh, uh, metals. Although they are called rare earth, they're not actually that rare. Uh, they're actually quite widespread uh, in the earth's crust. But they are, they are rare in one sense that uh, it's very difficult to extract them. Uh, a, they are very sparsely uh, spread out. Two, they are very closely packed with uh, radioactive uh, metals like thorium and uranium. Therefore, it becomes very difficult to extract them and you have to go through several checks and balances and environmental uh, safeguards have to be observed when you try and uh, take these uh, metals out, extract them. They are very expensive therefore to, uh, to extract. Now, in the 1960s and uh, 1980s, uh, America was the dominant uh, player in the rare earth uh, metals industry. Uh, but you know, uh, then something happened um, in the 1980s uh, as China sort of stepped out of its uh, communist isolation and Deng Xiaoping uh, authored a new uh, chapter of state capitalism uh, in China. Deng realized that China had the largest uh, reserves of rare earths in the world, about 30% of global supplies or global reserves rather came from China. So he realized that and he said, he, he said so in as many words that what is oil for the Middle East, uh, rare earths will be for China. So he put the might of the state behind getting China to become a global leader in rare earth metals. Now remember, China uh, had very low wages. China didn't bother too much about, you know, environmental safeguards and checks. In fact, uh, there were pretty dreadful working conditions in those uh, Chinese mines. As a consequence of all of that, the Chinese cost of production was very low, very, very low. And coincidentally, America at that point in time suffered a radioactive contamination, a radioactive leak in its biggest mine. So therefore, the Americans came in even stronger with more environmental safeguards. Net-net, China had a very low cost of production and therefore it made much more sense for the world not to produce it themselves but to import from China. Uh, and no one could compete with the Chinese on prices. And, the chi and China at that point in time also, uh, you know, joined the WTO. So the world got confident that, you know, China is going to play by the rule book, by the global free trade rules now that it is a member of the WTO. Therefore, people just shuttered their minds, shuttered their facilities. America did it. India also did it. And everyone started importing from China. China began supplying 90% of the global supply of these rare earth metals. Now, once China had achieved this domination, then, then China tried to play a little trick with the world. China started increasing export taxes and started slashing exports. Sort of tried to convince people that if you want a low cost access to these rare earth metals, you better set up your factories and manufacturing facilities in China. So as they kept on raising export taxes, as they kept on cutting, uh, slashing uh, global supplies, the prices of rare earth metals went up tenfold, tenfold in several instances. And people were, were getting sort of forced into moving their factories to China. That continued for about a decade. Then in 2011, China realized that rare earth metals are not just giving it economic power. They are also giving it political power, coercive political power because uh, an, an accident happened around 2011 where uh, a Chinese trawler, it, it ran into two Japanese patrol boats uh, and that led to a fight between the two countries, a conflict between the two countries uh, where, uh, the, where the, the Japanese actually detained the, uh, the Chinese trawler's captain. China retaliated by cutting off the supply of rare earth metals to Japan. Uh, it actually said that, you know, there's a, there's a strike in our port. We cannot send you rare earth metals anymore uh, for a while. They have to be stuck, etc., etc., etc. And that really hit Japan hard because J Japan is one of the largest producers of consumer electronics. 
and if rare earth metals stopped coming in from China, the Japanese factories uh, really suffered a loss of production. They were in fact in danger of shutting down. Um, uh, uh, the, the Japanese obviously gave up, they released the, uh, the captain of the Chinese trawler, but the Chinese upped the ante. They started putting this embargo now on the European Union and also on America. So they were telling the world that, listen, we can coerce you now because we hold the monopoly on these rare earth metals. In any case, uh, they, 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 they showed the world that they uh, could hold them to ransom and then suddenly they, they, they stopped the embargo and things came back to normal. But they continued to uh, increase export taxes and they continued to slash uh, exports. But the world also learned a, a very bitter lesson through this entire uh, fracas. Uh, the world realized that they can't depend on China, that they have to start their own production, including India. Uh, and the Indian and Japanese, uh, uh, there was a great collaboration between India and Japan. Uh, we started prospecting in the Indian Ocean. We, we reopened Indian Rare Earths Limited. Uh, we also started prospecting in Kazakhstan and Afghanistan, which, are, which have large reserves of these uh, rare earth metals. So, uh, uh, the, the, the world also went to the WTO and complained uh, against China's uh, uh, China violating free trade uh, practices, and they won the case. China was castigated by the WTO for uh, uh, indulging in unfair trade practices. The long and the short of all of this is that today, China supplies uh, have fallen. Global supplies have fallen from 90 percent to 60 percent, and the world has therefore uh, got its own supply uh, supplies in order. Although, of course, 60 uh, percent is still a very dominant player. So now you will ask me, what next? To figure that out, you have to think next. Think next. India and the world have to think next. Now India, India uh, has about 6% of the global reserves of rare earth metals. That's quite, quite, uh, quite a large bit. However, we still produce only 1%. Only 1% of the global supplies. And we still import 90% from China. Now that is a recipe for disaster. We need to fix this. Um, you know, generally speaking, I'm a great champion of uh, free trade rules. I hate uh, state intervention in, uh, in fully functioning free markets. But when free markets break down, there is a great case uh, for state uh, intervention. Uh, and here free markets have broken down because the monopoly player has played like a rogue. That's China. Also, the fact that there is increasing economic nationalism of this very finite resource. It's a finite resource. It's non-renewable. Therefore, every country is trying to hoard its own supplies of rare earth metals. Therefore, free trade rules don't operate. Free markets do not operate. In that case, the state must intervene. This is an exception in which the state must intervene. Of late, India has had some very good news from Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, in the Riyasi district of JNK, we've discovered uh, 5.9 million tons of lithium. Now, uh, there are, we are still a few years away from being able to exploit it economically, but the fact is that uh, we have seen that there could be such a large reserve. Uh, therefore, if you are thinking next here, then the government of India must do all it can to incentivize, to subsidize, but ensure that India comes up to potential in its uh, rare earth metal production and we start uh, creating local champions which also go on to dominate the world uh, in this trade for air earth metals. That's how we will think next.